Okay, so um, I'm Victor, that's Ramiro. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of role playing. I will, um, you will have to imagine that I'm an ops person, he's a developer, right? And the goal is to enable him to be able to do everything by himself because I hate receiving, when he starts sending me emails and Jira tickets and stuff like Jira, that. Jira, I, I, as a former Atlassian, Jira tickets. Yeah, yeah I want to open the window and kick him out. Uh, but your office is on the ground floor, right? So that uh, won't okay. be too bad. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, the idea is to get to the point where he can develop applications successfully by himself, right? So uh, what do you need? I need to simplify development. So the first thing I need is a cluster, I guess. Cluster. Okay. Cluster, yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Perfect. So uh, what we're going to do is show Ramiro how he can create a cluster, right? Uh, is this big enough? Do you see it? Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, so I already prepared a manifest that will create a cluster with absolutely everything that he needs. Now, we will run a cluster in EKS, in AWS, right? In AWS, that means that he would need to create subnets and VPCs and Internet Gateway and whole madness and shenanigans that he would never figure out because he has better things to do than study AWS for 17 years. So I created a new in the management cluster. I, I have a management Kubernetes cluster. I created a new custom resource definition with a corresponding controller. I'm using Crossplane for that, uh, but the logic still would be the same if you would be using something else. You shouldn't use Crossplane, but nevertheless, uh, that he can create something called cluster claim whenever he needs a cluster uh, and that he can use the labels over there to select where that cluster would be running and what is the type of the cluster. Now, the options depend on the implementations I create. Uh, I have quite a few implementations of a cluster, but in this case, he's saying provider should be AWS and cluster should be KS, right? And then a couple of parameters. How did they get to do those parameters? Uh, I spoke with Ramiro and with a few other people, everybody in my company, what do you need? What do you care about, right? Because many people do not care for everything. Uh, they just want to develop their applications. And we, we got to the point that uh, people can specify the size of the nodes. And since nobody knows whether it's T2 something something or 3 3 something something, we agreed on small, medium, big. And that will differ from one provider to another, right? Uh, we're going to start with three nodes and we're going to run Kubernetes 1.22. And finally, uh, he will need to connect to that cluster somehow to operate the cluster, to use that cluster. So this composition, we call it composition in Crossplane, will create a secret uh, called A-Team EKS, right? So what I'm going to do is create a cluster for him only the first time. Next time, if he opens a Jira ticket, he will be fired. He <laughs> cannot be fired because he's a founder, so I would be fired. But <laughs> nevertheless, imagine that that's not the case. Uh, I'm going to apply. Now, normally you would do this with Argo CD or Flux and you know all the jazz, but not today. Um, so I'm going to say, hey, uh, file name is going to be example skates uh, AWS EKS one point something something. And the process of creating everything required to the, for the cluster would start. Now, I'm cheating right now, right? I'm doing. Uh, unspeakable things uh, in a live demo, and that's mostly because it takes like 20 minutes to 30 minutes, 30 minutes closer in AWS uh, to create everything, so I'm saving you from that part, but I did the same thing just earlier before the session, right? I executed exactly the same command. Now, if he's interested to know what's going on, he can say, hey, um, uh, let's take a look at what's going on. Namespace is, oh, wrong. Namespace is a team. That's the namespace of his team. And get all cluster claims. And he can see that his cluster is here. This is, again, customized output, right? This is made specifically for my organization for creating teams. Uh, the output says, hey, control plane is active. Node pool is active. It's all synchronized. It's all ready. Secret is in a team EKS. Uh, you can go. Now, before I proceed, before we go to the next requirement, if uh, that, that, that's for him, right? He, that, that's the view. That's what, that's what he would execute. If I, as ops person, uh, would like to see more and see actually what is happening with his self-service, I could say, hey, get managed resources. Managed resources in Crossplane is a kind of alias, a shortcut that gives all the resources that were created. Uh, and you can see that actually quite a few things, right? 
behind that simple YAML, we got a VPC, security group, group internet gateway, route table, subnets, cluster, node group, and so on and so forth. Things that he doesn't care about. Uh, he does, but who knows? Not today. Uh, <laughs> not, as, and not as a developer. Exactly, not as a developer. And now to make it more interesting, it's not only that this creates a Kubernetes cluster, this creates production ready or something ready cluster, right? So some applications are already installed, some Helm charts are installed, uh, upgraded, Kubernetes objects, everything is there. It's not only AWS, right? Now, what else do you need? Well, I have the cluster, I have the version I need, but I, I need to access the cluster. Okay, I let's do that, right? I need my kubeconfig. Okay, so uh, you already saw from previews that that's uh, baked in. So if I go to a team, get secrets, uh, you can see that uh, there is a secret with kubeconfig uh, created through that definition called the ATM EKS. And now I will not go through the, uh, you know, normally I would, uh, he would now have to do, uh, get that secret output to JSON, then uh, uh, get that data, kubeconfig and base64 encode. I created a small script that will do this because uh, I'm lazy, he's lazy, somebody's lazy. Um, and this gets the kubeconfig he needs. I will destroy this, this Kubernetes cluster, so if you're really kind of like a rain man type of person who can memorize this, it will not last long. Uh, so I will export kubeconfig uh, path, right, so that uh, kubectl uh, uses this, um, uh, this configuration, and if I say get nodes, here's the cluster for Ramira. If it works, demos fail always, right, so sooner, there we go, no. three nodes because that's what he said, 122, and so on and so forth. So what else? Well, the application we're building has compute and a database. So okay. I need a database, and I don't want to run this in Kubernetes because I want it to be expensive and fancy. Okay, RDS is good? Yep, that works. Okay, so here's how we would do that, right? Same logic. I created a service that he can consume to create a database. Again, in different providers, MySQL, Postgres, what's or not. Now we're going to create Postgres in AWS, which is um, RDS. Kubectl, namespace is A-team, that's his namespace. Uh, we want to apply, no, oh no, actually, uh, dev namespace, because this is your cluster. This is for your development. Apply whatever is defined in examples, uh, SQL, AWS. And you have an extra namespace name. Uh, what did I do? 18 dev. 18 de Oh, yes, yes, I do. Look at that. If he started correcting me, then we are not going the right way, man. Uh, no, okay, so, again, simple definition. Now, I intentionally executed first before I show you what, how this happened and what, what happened simply because it takes four to five minutes, give or take, in AWS to create a database. So, I'm bathing my time. Uh, so, here is what I, uh, what I create, what he can create, anybody can create, right? Uh, another definition, right? So another custom resource definition uh, that will do whatever needs to be do, but is interface that is specially made for the people in my company. It says, I want to claim SQL, right? I want to create an SQL claim. The name is whatever, right? All these the definitions are whatever you want them to be. Uh, through labels, we are going to specify what we want, like uh, AWS Postgres. It could be AWS uh, MySQL or whatever number of implementations we have. Some parameters, only the things that some the rest of the people care about, everything else is hidden, and same logic like with cluster. The secret with authentication to the database is going to be stored here. Now, for those of you uh, who are, uh, actually, let's take a look first what's the status. kubectl um, dash dash namespace uh, namespace dev get SQL claims, right? And you should see that it's not ready, false, right? It takes four to five minutes, give or take, uh, to create and manage database over there. Now, if I would be, again, and remember, at the beginning, I was going to my management cluster. Now I'm in his cluster, in completely new cluster, uh, nothing to do with what I had before. And if I say get managed, I can see all the resources that are managed right now in, um, in that cluster. Uh, it will take a moment or two or something like that. It doesn't matter. We're going to get through that. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, maybe. It'll work. It'll work. Live demos. Okay. Almost there. There we go. Right. Again, a bunch of stuff happening because a bunch of things are important and uh, necessary in AWS, but not for the end users. What matters here is that you can see the RDS itself 
is being created while I speak. Now, uh, while doing this, I mentioned before that I'm doing this through, through crossplane. Since a couple of more minutes left until it's uh, done, let me show you how I did what I did, how I created the service. Now, there are two important components in how we create those services. One is a definition, and another one is composition or implementation of that definition. Now, in this specific case, I have uh, packages SQL the definition, and this is where I defined uh, what we call um, composite resource definition, which essentially creates a controller and custom resource definition in Kubernetes. And uh, what, the, what this does is defines open API schema that says what is the schema that will be used to define that something, right? And in this case, you can see uh, that I have properties in this version size namespace, right? Whatever I want, it's, it's up to me to define that schema. And then we have uh, one implementation of that, uh, that schema, which is AWS, right? And here I defined what it means to run a database uh, whatever that is, right? Uh, whatever is required, which could be a combination, it could be only AWS, it could be Azure, it could be a combination with some Kubernetes resources or anything I want, right? Um, now, uh, where was I? Uh, let's see whether this is running. If it's not running, I'm in trouble. Still false. Okay, tell them about what you're gonna, what do you want to do later when I finish with this? <laughs> So what I want to do after that is start implementing the application. Okay. You know, we have to build some software so we can make some money eventually. Um, and for that, I want to use Octeto. Okay. So Octeto is an open source project. It's a CLI. You can get it at github.com slash Octeto, Octeto, that lets you develop directly in your cluster. Instead of having to write code locally and then build, push your image, or use something like Docker Compose, you can use the same manifests, the same code and just launch your your application in Kubernetes, run Octeta up, and develop right there. The same way that Crossplane simplifies all the provisioning of <coughs> infra, Octeta simplifies all the dependency management and definition of what development means for your application. Okay. Do you need anything else? Well, I need to access the database. You need to access because right now we have a cluster for your applications. Uh -huh. We have a database server. I have to config, so I can use Octero, but I need the credentials. You need the credentials? Well, okay, that is, right? so that's, that part is easy. Uh, get secrets, no, get secrets, right? Here is the MyDB, that's your connection, right? Now, again, I will, I will cheat a bit, and instead of doing uh, kubectl this and that, I'm going to uh, parse it with the script that I have here that will, uh, no. Ah, yeah, dev, 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 the namespace. There we go. All right, those are the credentials that we're reading. At the same time, apart from the credentials created by Crossplane, I also use this opportunity to script to create a new entry uh, called dbuuri, U-R-I, or whatever it's pronounced, uh, which is uh, what we need for the next thing, because the server itself, now we're going to switch from Crosspoint to something else. And that's something else is that we need to create a schema in that server. We need a database and we need schema. I'm going to use uh, schema hero uh, for that. Uh, and uh, actually, this is a showcase of how that composition creates a cluster and installs everything that is required in the cluster. So some of the things are already there. PostgreSQL.SQL.Crossplane.io, uh, right? So Crossplane also already created a database there. There we go. It's synced through database in that server. Uh, I will skip the part showing you in uh, UI with colors. Uh, you need to trust me that that works, probably. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that we are done. I think that I'm going to let now, uh, uh, I, I will let you do the Octeto part. Perfect. So I we might have, have forgotten something in the demo. If I did, then it will fail, but we'll see. You know. That's that's what that's what um, that's what live demos are for. So we have a cluster, we have a database, we have secrets for everything. So the next thing is for us to to develop. And I'm going to show you. The first thing I'm going to show you is Octeto Jamble. Octeto Jamble is how you describe what your dev environment looks like. It has three main components: the build phase, the deploy phase, and the development phase. Build is containers you're building, 
You could be using anything that works with BuildKit, your local Docker daemon, a remote BuildKit instance, anything you want. You can define all the parameters that you need there, build arcs, all that stuff. Deploy is how you're going to deploy it. In this case, we're going to use kubectl to in instantiate schema hero, and then, in this case, the <coughs> manifest of our application. And finally, the part that makes Octero unique is how you define your dev environment. You can define as many overrides as you want. The way it's going to work is Octero is going to look for that specific application, in this case, by name. It's going to look for a deployment or stateful set on your namespace that is called Postgres-app. It's going to create a copy of that, of that pod with all of these overrides. You can do things like change the image, insert new MVARs, copy extra files, inject extra capabilities, in this case, for remote debugging. And also, it's going to keep your code synchronized between your local machine and your remote environment. So everything's there. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to Context is how you tell Octero which cluster you're going to be working on. In this case, we're going to use the cluster that I just file a Jira ticket and magically appear. I don't know how. <laughs> and then we are going to run Octero up. And in this case, we're going to use my namespace dev. Octero, if this works, it's going to use the instructions on the build and deploy phase to build the image if needed, deploy your application, in this, in this case, both Schema Hero and Kubernetes, now the case of YAML fight. And then with Octeto up, because if you see up, up there on command, I have bash, is going to create a remote terminal into my pod in Kubernetes. All my code will be synchronized and all those things. Other things that, if, you, if you're curious when you're using Octeto, you can do a PSOX, you'll see we're running an SSH service. To do the file sync, we have sync thing for file synchronization, and a couple other things there. Everything comes in single binary. It works with any container image. We use beautiful portable Go binaries to inject all these things so that you don't have to customize your Docker images. There we go. Pull the dev image, synchronizing files. And here we are. All right. First thing you get here in this remote terminal is I like to, I'm going to dump the environment because one of the, the things that Octero does for you because you're running on Kubernetes is you automatically inherit the configuration from your application. In this case, if you look at, or I'll show you in a minute, our, our application definition, it's mounting all these secrets that Victor created um, on my namespace as MVARs. This was done by my application, not by Octero. And my dev environment will automatically inherit these things. So I'm there, the same thing. You know, if, we, if we look at all the other files to kind of see what happened. Okay. Like demos. And here we are, the code's here. Great. So you'll see that um, this is the application definition. All the secrets are here. So we are reusing the same manifest, same configurations, all those things. But now we are in Kubernetes. So what this means is I can directly run my version there. I'm going to install dependencies. It's going to start my process. So on top of this, Octeta will get you remote um, ports for your API, for your debugger, all those things, which means that if I go here, let's see if this works. <coughs> Local host. Almost. There we go. Almost. There we go. We have the application up and running. And let's look here. This is the application that I'm working on now because I'm a regular. I can try this and say, hey, prepare demo for talk. Sure. And here's, here's kind of the first step. We have a dev environment. Everything is running there. Now, what's cool about this is that I can go here, or I think it's cool. And that's the reason why we looked at it. And I can make any changes here, and it will automatically be applied on this remote dev environment. So in this case, I'm trying to delete this, but, and this is the feature I'm working on. If you look at developer tools, you'll see that the endpoint is failing. 
no, here. There you go. The endpoint is not found. So what I'm going to do here is quickly implement this endpoint. Uh, I'm cheating. I have the code ready. But here's one of the things that I really like about Octeto and the speed it enables, right? I'm going to save this file. And then I'm just going to add it here. Same thing here. I save my file. Octeto will synchronize this with my remote environment, which means that in this case, I can just run the same command again. Blah, blah, blah. Go run server. It'll have the new code, so I can just load it here. Refresh this, make sure I have the latest. I can now delete it, and now it will work. I'm developing directly in my cluster. I didn't have to rebuild anything. This is a, this is a simple example, but I'm, I'm doing um, I'm doing things end to end. So imagine you have a, a bigger orchestration, five, six services talking to each other, configurations, all those things. So this is what Octeto gives you. The other thing you can do that I particularly personally find super useful is you can do things like remote debugging. You can forward other ports. In this case, I'm not gonna go through it right now, but you can create your launch JSON configuration. Octeto will automatically forward the ports, in this case, two, three, four, four five, and you, by using the remote debugging interface of Go, you can attach it to the container, debug step by step, see what's going on, rather than having to do it <coughs> the old school of like build your container, add some logs, build your container, push it. The main idea with Octeto is to help you go faster by giving you this fully integrated environment with your code and that works with any service. The, the way here we targeted one service, if you have multiple <coughs> services, just point to whichever you want and you can develop that way. And you know, this works on any Qf cluster, whatever you have it, all you need to have is the permission to deploy and port forward. And this works bare metal, hosted, mini Qf, anywhere you want. So we have a feature. I'm seems, done. Seems like I'm done with my work. That's our talk. We prepared even slides, which we chose not to show because we forgot about them, right? There are slides. That's okay. Anyways, what matters is that uh, check out both projects, Crossplane, uh, it's all open source, at least, uh, yeah, open source, Crossplane, uh, and uh, Octeto. Mm -hmm. And any questions? Shoot. Yes. So essentially, uh, among many things that Crossplane does, there are two important things. First, it, it gives one-to-one -one relation. So when you install Crossplane, you can install providers. Like in this case, I installed AWS provider and Kubernetes provider and so on and so forth, right? And those providers give you one-to-one -one re uh, relation between uh, uh, a custom resource and something, like in this case, AWS, right? So I got resources in my Kubernetes clusters that match all the resources in AWS, right? And then the second part of the story is what we call compositions. They allow you to create new interfaces that combine uh, some managed resources, uh, stitch them together, uh, create relations and so on and so forth, so that my users are not using uh, the resources from those AWS, in this case, providers, but I create new resource uh, and uh, tell them how to use those compositions, right? So uh, in majority of cases that I know of Crossplane users, they don't use directly those resources. Like, hey, let me create EC2 and let me create this, but create those compositions and then expose them. It, the idea really, among other things, is to enable people to create internal developer platforms, right? Now, on top of that, you would have other things like Octeto, or for example, the previous talk was about Backstage. Backstage is one of the tools that, that I see most of the time used together with crossplay, right? Because it allows people to create the, that graphical user interface, but still behind all that is, is crossplane compositions that that you as a service provider, when I say service provider, I mean, I don't mean AWS, but ser providing services internally in your company, you can create them and expose them to your users. I, I often, I'm old, I often forget the question. I have no idea whether I answered and what you asked, <laughs> but let me yeah, know did, if that's did, not did the case. Did he even get close? <laughs> don't, don't encourage him. Tell him like no, <laughs> <laughs> no. That's that's one of my favorite use cases for Crossplane is that you can create like the composition called DB, and then even you can you don't even have to 
expose that it's AWS and Postgres. It could be as a, hey, DB, small, medium, large. And then as a developer, I'm like, hey, it's my dev environment. I want a small DB. And I don't have to worry about, and then he worries about making sure we're all in the same standard version, same patch level. That is a very powerful thing as, as you build these abstractions because you don't want developers to pick like the version of Postgres because it's, you know, it has to be a decision of a team, it has to be a decision of support, like that's, other things. I, I think that that's, that's one of the, you know, you can have two approaches when building or, or exposing services to other users. You can have, and both have merit depending on the context. One is highly opinionated vendor by, by vendor, right? Which figures out what you need and if that's what you need, great, right? But usually in bigger organization, you cannot just use something opinionated by vendor. You want it to be tailor-made for you. When that's the case, then that's potential solution to create specific services. Anybody else? Come on. Going once. Going twice. Okay, you can tackle them in the hallway, except for, you know, uh, co code appropriate and so forth. Um, <laughs> thanks very much. He's wearing a green Appreciate one, it. so you can tackle him. Thank you very much, you. All right, we're uh, also perfectly on time, pretty much.